Today we're going to talk about a film called Tyrell. What I really want to get into is something that affected the film, and that is when marketing kind of gets involved and breaks down that barrier between you and the film, which should really just be a, a two-way street. It should be you and the movie interacting and getting what you can out of it by virtue of what it is in itself. What's it called? <laughs> say like I mean what is Tyrell Tyrell is a film about a black man named Tyler a white guy calls Tyler Tyrell it's supposed to be some sort of uh, kind of awkward moment of uh, perhaps very subtle microaggression and racial tension it's a film that really is trying to get into um, awkwardness and discomfort and it does that by putting this black character Tyler into a party with uh, about a dozen or so white guys and they're like really obnoxious characters. They're kind of white, fratty, kind of party guys who are out trying to celebrate one of the characters' birthdays. The film is really about how uncomfortable and awkward it is for Tyler kind of being with this group and being the only black guy there. And I get that, and from the trailer right away, you kind of understood um, some of the awkwardness that would ensue. Even as I'm describing it, you know, you're kind of going through this idea of, you know, taking this, this black character, introducing him to an all-white environment. It's out in the middle of the woods, at a house. It's a party he's invited to. And immediately you might be reminded of a film that came out in the last year or so. And if you're not reminded of Get Out, don't worry. The trailer will tell you to be reminded of Get Out. And the poster will tell you to be reminded of Get Out. And that's a very damaging thing. Because when you have an interesting concept, the last thing you want to do is be compared to something that already touched on that topic, especially one that is profoundly successful as Get Out was. And the problem for this film is, it didn't really have as much to say as Get Out did. And it's not to say that the film wasn't uh, competent at what it was doing, it's that Get Out did it a profoundly good job of conveying a lot of ideas and concepts, not just through dialogue and exposition, but through a lot of the storytelling devices and the way that the horror was constructed to really elucidate a lot of these ideas, not just about blatant racism and about you know, eugenics and some of the crazier concepts, but also just about you know, kind of the, the uncomfortable and awkward moment of a white guy having nothing to talk about with a black guy than to, to go to sports or how they voted for Barack Obama or, you know, to try to act cool by doing a fist bump. It were those painful moments in Get Out that gave it kind of character and feeling and vibrancy. And the problem is from the trailer, especially with that comparison, you're still not sure what, what genre the film fits into. Is something bad going to happen at this cabin? Is it going to be a comedy? Is it going to be a drama? And the problem is the film doesn't even really quite know. It's more of just this constant discomfort as a character is interacting with others. You know, the, the first day you've kind of got the character just trying to stay cool and be himself and make a good impression. And then from the second day on, the character is just you know, drinking a lot, getting stoned, and kind of just acting the fool. It's very, very, it's hard to empathize with that character. And that's one of the bigger problems with the film is that not only is it hard to empathize with the character because of his actions, but you don't necessarily even get to really understand the conflict. And when I say that, it's not just because they don't do a good job of communicating it. They, they, they go above and beyond trying to communicate how uncomfortable the character is. Uh, there are a lot of scenes dealing just with the character, whether he's crying in a bathtub or walking drunk up a street in 20 degree weather or yelling at Michael Sarah, which, you know, that was probably the best part. I think we've all wanted to do that. What the film kind of struggles with is, yeah, it's a group of white people, but it's also a group that is staying with a friend of theirs who's Argentinian. It's you know, uh, a house owned by two gay guys. You've got diversity in the group. The only thing the group doesn't have is women. And despite some of these characters' strangeness in their own right, it, it still feels like any group that you would deal with in these large numbers. You're going to go to a group of 12, 13, 14 people, and there's going to be strange people, people you don't want to interact with. But to react as dramatically as this character does just kind of makes you feel like the film feels like the stakes are a lot higher than they really are. You've really got this unempathetic character making constantly bad decisions, surrounded by unlikable characters, and if the film's goal is to make you as uncomfortable as the main character is and wanting to get out of the situation and escape it, see I said get out again, it's very successful in that way because I wanted to leave, I wanted to get out of that party. It, it reminded me of parties I've been to with people I don't like. Now there are some positives. It's, it's very well acted. Not the least of which is Michael Sarah, who I typically don't like and he's really good in this. Never trust the white man. The titular character, well, pseudo titular. You know what I'm trying to say. He plays the part really well. He's got a, a very strong range of emotions. What the film struggles with is really trying to effectively communicate why those emotions are being felt to the degree that they are and whether or not they're actually warranted in that situation. The dialogue is pretty strong. 
Um, there's kind of some, some weird cinematography in it, some kind of like strange fisheye lenses at points that you would think could accentuate at some points when the character is more intoxicated or when the character is more uncomfortable, but it's kind of just used sporadically throughout at various points, so I'm not sure if there was really a, a point to it, but it did have an interesting look at times. The biggest thing I would say is to appreciate any of the positives of it. Um, and again, I don't really think that there are that many negatives. I think that even as I talk about it now, most of the negatives that I have are, I really wish I never saw that trailer. If you want to watch a movie about a character who's put in an uncomfortable position that is surrounded by people who, maybe you've been in that situation. You've been to a party that you didn't really want to be at, but you're trying to support a friend, and you're surrounded by people that maybe you don't like, and you're just trying to get through it. Maybe you've been in a situation where you've, you've been at an event with strangers, and you tried to act cool, and you just acted like an asshole. This film will, it puts you in that spot, and there's something to be said for that. If you don't like awkward situations and great discomfort, and you don't like a character who is a little melodramatic, and you don't necessarily like dealing with films that, where nothing really happens, it might not be a film for you. Forget you ever saw Get Out. That's the best I could, don't, don't ever, don't, don't watch, don't, forget about Get Out.